Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to a discussion about Mango. This is the part four, and in the previous part, I had discussed about the magical girls, right? How I like the ones where they're like uh, quite normal to begin with, and then they kind of get a little dark or messed up, or they kind of subvert your expectations about what's kind of going on in a magical girl show. Today, I have another one that is just beautiful. It is... Oops! I made the wrong girl into a magical girl! Uh, this is actually one of the very few manga that I actually physically own. Uh, I own, I think, the first three or four volumes. But there are a couple more, and if you want it, you can actually go buy it as well, because uh, it is translated to English beautifully. Uh, so anyway, this particular one is about this little chubby mascot character kind of thing that the magic girls normally have. And this girl, who is, uh, uh, God, I think her name is, uh, is it Ko or something like that? We'll find out in a moment. Uh, she gets transformed into a magical girl. And as you can see, she's really cute and normal and, you know, just looks just fine. And so it's like, wow, she's really cute. I'm going to make her a new magical girl. And then as soon as she, he uh, does it, she changes personalities pretty quick. She starts smoking, says, shit, where's the armor? That bat's almost here. There also. Ugh. She just gets really like the, the fucking shift in like the the art style is just beautiful. And she's like a chain smoking magical girl. It, it's amazing. And so this like demon comes up and he's like, I'm going to eat you. And she's like, huh? Fuck off. And basically like it's all up in its face. And the mascot character just kind of grabs it and like manhandles it. It's fucking great. And without even transforming, she just like beats the shit out of this demon. Isn't it just lovely? And like the, the, the combat is nice and visceral and gory and just amazing. Ah, oh, it, it's so great. And there's a bunch of panty shots and uh, stuff like that that occurs throughout it, uh, if that's your thing. Um, but as you can see, she's a monster, uh, quite literally, in her own right. And she just massacres these things without even needing to transform. When she transforms, she does get stronger, though. And so the uh, mascot character is like, that, that, that's impossible. And she's like, oh, what do you know? Spit it out. Come on. Save me out one more time and you won't be able to fly again. It's great. It's great. And you can go to like the, uh, the next chapter here and it's like <laughs> more panty shots and shit like that. I want to get a good picture of her like transforming. If I can find one. Also more panty shots. Uh, some more of that stuff. Is there one where she transforms? I don't want to go through too many. Okay, we'll just stop here, I guess. Yeah, so let's just stop on this lovely, like, variance between, like, the normal, like, cutesy art style for the most part, and then just the grotesque, like, beautiful art that is, like, when she gets pissed. Um, we'll, we'll end things there uh, for that. But it, it's it's amazing. It is a insane, like, story of this... Like, not evil, but, like, just pissy magical girl who, like, just goes and fucks up these things. It is it is hilarious. And there's drama and stuff that occurs as well. And, like, there's, there's even times where she, like, blushes and looks really cute. And it looks like it's, like, a normal magical girl show because she's being really cute. And then she just, like, smokes a cigarette or gets angry and has, like, these, like, veins that pop up on her face like this. It's brilliant. It, it is just... The contrast is really what draws me to this. It's just great. And the, the cover art of it as well on the, the on the books is just amazing. So definitely check that out if this seems like your thing. Let's uh let's switch over to the next one on our list here. Uh, this one, it's an isekai. And it's quite different. Uh, it, it uh it's kind of like another anime that I know. So let's, let's discuss that one. So this one is reincarnated as a dragon's egg. Let's aim to be the strongest. So very cute uh, cover art here. So we go through and it's about this 
this guy who gets reincarnated into this world and he ends up being a dragon egg. Like he's this like low level monster that's like literally just like an egg with legs and a tail. And he has to like fight for survival and stuff like that. As you can see, he like shows stats so we can see all of his stats and his different stuff like that. Uh, so it's kind of like a game, kind of like not all the people can see that kind of stuff. And you can see like he has a level one out of five. And after he reaches the, the top level, he's able to evolve into another form of the dragon. And it gives him like branching paths and he can choose different things and stuff like that. And there's this voice, uh, this God's voice skill that has like the voice of God that talks to him and like says like, you are currently a dragon egg. It is an F rank monster. That's how your God's voice skill works. It explains things like status and items and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. Um, essentially, he tries to survive in this world because he's in a uh, forest where everything wants to just like fucking destroy him. As you can see, this uh, this gnarly ass uh, dark worm, which is a couple levels ahead of him, also rank F though. And uh, well, it's got teeth as the dragon egg does not have. Uh, but he very quickly fucks it up uh, manages, well, not very quickly, he runs away, and then somehow manages to, uh, kill it, and levels up, and when he levels up, let's get to that point, because I think it comes here at the end, very interesting, like, art style and stuff like that occurs, so he levels up, to rank five, says he can evolve, and he's given a choice between a little dragon, which is a D rank, and, uh, it's bigger and stuff like that, and a baby dragon, which is weaker, and God's voice kind of forces him to go to the baby dragon route. Uh, and so he so becomes strong, becomes strong, becomes strong. It's God's voice just constantly, constantly like harping on him like that. So he decides to do it. Seeing all the different paths he can go down. And he evolves into da -da -da -da, a cute little baby dragon. Um, with He actually has hands and claws and stuff now. Although they're quite still weak because he is a baby dragon. I'm going to not scroll down any further here. But it's a very interesting story with him like evolving multiple times, getting stronger and stronger, fighting monsters, trying to interact with humans and save them and help them, uh, and also making some monster friends. It's uh, it's very interesting. It reminds me of So I'm a Spider, So What, the anime that came out uh, last season, uh, because he starts off as a monster. Um, and there's like an, an evolution process to it. So it's very interesting. Uh, definitely check it out. If you liked So I'm a Spider, So What? You'll like this one because this one's more monster oriented. And it doesn't have what So I'm a Spider, So What? had. Where it kind of goes between uh, the main character and the side characters that are humans. And uh, experiences their stuff. It focuses specifically on the dragon guy. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, the way that he levels up and does things. is very, very cool. I liked it. So, check that one out. Uh, once again, I, I'm forgetting to tell y'all about the chapter length and stuff like that. Uh, so, to do that real quick, <laughs> I get too excited, I'm sorry. Um, the Oops, I Made a Wrong Girl into the Magical Girl anime, or manga, uh, currently, it has... Four volumes. Uh, the last one I see translated was January 2020. Uh, I don't know if that's the end because it says it's ongoing still. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing maybe that the uh, the mangaka is still working on it to get it out. Uh, the uh, reincarnated is Dragon Egg. Currently, it has 19 chapters out uh, that are translated that I can see. Um, the last one being translated on February 11th. So it's been a while. I'm not sure if that's because the translators dropped the manga uh, translation or if that's because it uh, is waiting to be written. Um, as always, that's kind of what, you know, you wait on is that's two things. So, yeah. Um, the next one that we're going to be talking about is also an isekai, and it, it actually, it makes me sad uh, the way that it begins. Uh, it is uh, da, 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 the world of Leadale. I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's uh, lead A-L-E, like lead ale. 
I don't know if maybe that's a bad pronunciation. Uh, also known as In the Land of Ledeil, um, or Ledeil no Daichi Naite. Naite something like that. Anyway, uh, this one only has six chapters currently of the manga, so I'm, I believe that it's actually derived from a light novel, uh, as you do, because also there's an anime coming out for this in January. Uh, I, I was uh, reading through the manga, and I saw that in one of the pages, it was like celebrating the uh, anime release. And I was like, huh? So I looked it up and I was like, oh shit, it comes out you know, next year. That's something to look forward to. And I'm really looking forward to it because it, it, seems, it seems interesting. So let's go ahead and say, for right now, it centers around this girl here. She's kind of like a, a, a half-elf, I believe it's her race. Uh, but she wasn't always a half-elf. So she kind of wakes up in this inn, right? And there's this like little inn girl talking to her, and she's like, huh? What is this place? Where am I? This room. And then she sees like a flashback to her previous life. Um, I was in the hospital. And then you know, she opens up her item box and you know, sees that she's like in the game now, looks at herself, and she's like, oh, I'm my game character. That's interesting. Um, and all that kind of stuff occurs, you know. The typical isekai thing. Uh, and she starts to realize that the freedom of movement, the visuality, the, the girl's touch, everything that she, you know, is experiencing is a lot more real than it would be in the VR she was playing with. And she, you know, looks at her character, uh, Quena is her name, and all the different stuff she has. She's level 1,100, which is very strong. And uh, as she talks to people in the world she begins to realize that the world she's in now is very different from the game world she was in because there's different like countries and stuff has occurred, but there's still kind of the same like features and stuff like that. And so she tries to log out. There's no log out button. There's no help button or anything like that. And, you know, it's just kind of like weird. Um, so she gets called down to breakfast and stuff like that and, you know, goes down to eat it and all that. So she, uh, she gets, you know, hyped up, and, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, so essentially in the six chapters I've got, it, it seems like it's her living her new life. Um, because she, she finds out that she thinks she died in her real world because she was, um, it, it sounds like she was in an accident, and it like made her bedridden and she could not leave. She couldn't eat food. She was just like uh, constantly in a bed getting like a, uh, a saline drip or whatever the hell it is that like makes it so you survive. Um, basically just skin and bones. Uh, and she had like a VR set to like escape from the real world into. Uh, very sad and like it, it's great that she was able to like be reborn into this world. Very cool. Uh, and so it seems like from this one. It's not a tale of trying to get back to the real world, because why would you want to um, in this case? It's more about trying to explore the world and uh, make it better. And so she, using like her game logic and stuff, she ends up deciding that she's going to build up the town that she starts in here. Um, and that's kind of what it seems like just from the first six chapters that I've, uh, I've read uh, is what is kind of going on. Um, it also turns out that in this game, you could purchase other players' like secondary characters that they were no longer using. Like you could put, like the players could put their characters up for bid, and other players could buy them to have them turned into NPCs, who could then interact with your character in the game. Um, as like, and you can like set up their relations, like, oh, I'm the, the the brother of this character, or I'm the mother of this character. And in her case, she has three adopted children <laughs> that were all other players' NPCs that are apparently out in this world that she's also going to go and try to find. Uh, very interesting kind of concept. Uh, so that's what it kind of seems to be. It's very interesting. I definitely want to read more of it, and I'm definitely 100% going to watch the anime, and it's going to be great. I can already tell. The trailer for it was beautiful and gorgeous, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to checking that out. Great. Now then, there's one more that we need to talk about today, and it's one that I actually just finished reading yesterday. 
it's very entertaining. It's a very neat plot. And that is the guild official with the out of the way skill shadowy is in fact the legendary assassin. So it starts off with uh, our main character kind of sneaking around a castle here and, you know, assassinating demons because he's an assassin. That's what he does. And he is with a party and he's like breaking into this, you know, building and stuff like that, opening the gate there. And he encounters the demon lord, who's this beautiful woman here, right? And so we, we cut back a little bit to him with his party of heroes where there's, uh, you know, these four women who are here and there's like a priest, there's a sword. Yeah, right down here. There, there's a warrior, a sorcerer, a holy knight and a high priestess. And uh, they've all been climbing and trying to go after the demon lord to stop the demon invasion and all that kind of stuff. And so they're like coming up the plan. So... You know, we'll distract them and you'll use your assassination abilities to kill the Demon Lord uh, is essentially what's going on. Um, and as they're all resting up before they go to the final fight with the Demon Lord, he's like, yeah, I got to go take a piss. And so he just uh, sneaks out, sneaks up to the Demon Lord's floor and in like this matter of like five, ten minutes, kills her. Or does he? That's the question. So as you can see, there's like some interesting fighting stuff going on here between the Demon King and all that, he uh, dodges around her and takes this, like, knife and just pokes her in the forehead. And she's down. I'll remember defeat. And she's like, I'll recall the forces will, you know, quit, will go away. And he's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. If you have a last wish, spit it out. And then we uh, find out that he just, he just left. He didn't go back to his party or anything. And they charge in, find the demon lord dead on the ground there and whatnot. And so he goes reports to the king that he was hired by to kill the demon lord. And he's like, yeah, the job's done, all that, yada, yada. And the king's like, I'll give you anything you want. What do you want? And uh, essentially he's like, you know what? I just want to live a normal life because he's been an assassin all this time. And so the king's like, uh, if that's what you want, okay. <clears throat> and so towards the end... He uh, gets his wish, and he goes to this smaller town, and there's a cat that's following him here. However, if he uh, uses a little bit of magic on the collar, oh, look, it's the Demon Lord. So he put a collar on the Demon Lord that basically takes away her magical powers so she cannot cast spells and also allows her to shapeshift into a, a cat uh, if he you know, does it or whatnot. Um, and as such, they begin living together. And so, you know, he says, you'll get used to it. And they kind of leave and whatnot. And then, well, where do we go now? We're going to go to another place, yada, yada, yada. And then it, it kind of ends there. Um, in the second chapter, I'm not going to show it. Uh, it starts out with like, so I started living a normal life. Uh, we ate, we slept, had sex, ate, slept, had sex. <laughs> and it kind of goes like that for a while. Uh, Basically, what he thought was normal was just doing that, eating, sleeping, and then, you know, boning down. Uh, but the story itself really seems to be like a romance story. It's very cute and adorable. Um, there is like some action elements and some adventure going on. Uh, but it's really about these two, this Roland guy who's like trying to lead a normal life after being an assassin. And if someone... It's funny because there's a running gag where if someone says, yeah, that's normal uh, to try and get him to do something, he'd be like, I'm in. Uh, for example, uh, someone said it was like normal to uh, like go out drinking with your friends. And he was like, I'm in. Let's go. Even though he was like adamant about not doing it before. Uh, so if anyone mentions normal and the whole thing, uh, anytime normal is mentioned, it's always in air quotes. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, but essentially, uh, him and this demon lord are basically in a relationship and like it's very cute uh to watch the the demon lord's reactions to everything and him trying to like figure out what's going on because he doesn't really have emotions uh, and he kind of gets them throughout the story and it's uh very cute when he realizes like 
because at one point they're talking about her getting pregnant. Like, what would they do if she got pregnant? Um, and she's like, I think it would be great. And then he's like talking to another person. And he's like, when she like started hugging me, I got like this warm and like fuzzy feeling. It was weird. You wanted to know what that was. And the other person was like, oh, it's probably like love and, you know, happiness or something like that. And he was like, huh, interesting. Uh, it's kind of a cute thing going on there. And really, I just want to keep, you know, reading it just for the fact that the, uh, the demon lord is very cute uh, in how they interact and everything like that. Uh, so definitely want to check out. Yeah, so definitely check that one out. It is very cool because uh, he's just a badass and he gets a job as a guild official, as a receptionist, uh, and essentially helps adventurers pick out quests and uh, all that kind of stuff. And he like gives them tips and advice on how to take out various creatures. Um, and so like the guild adventurers go from being like mediocre at best to becoming stronger because he's providing them with like the stuff they need to not die and get like discouraged on. Uh, missions and stuff like that. Uh, and it kind of bolsters the reputation of all that stuff, while he also uses his you know, previous occupation as an assassin to his advantage when various people try to uh, mess with the guild, him or his friends. He, uh, he always seems to have dirt on people, and he'll just like take off these glasses that he wears, narrow his eyes, and then they'll like, recognize that he's the assassin that they hired for some dirty work, and he basically blackmails them into... Uh, fucking off. <laughs> it's, it's great. You definitely check it out. Currently, it only has 22 chapters, um, but it seems like it's being updated semi-regularly. Uh, it was like May, and then July, then September, and then another one in September, so I don't know. It's hard to tell with, uh, with manga when it's getting updated. You know what I'm saying? But definitely one to check out uh, if you are into that kind of thing. It's very adorable story. Uh, so check it out. Yeah. Anyway, that'll be all for me, everyone. Uh, it might be a little while until I get a another group of four uh, stories to talk about, because uh, this is currently all the ones that I have that I'm like, I would recommend these to people. Um, even though I've read like a few hundred now, uh, I have a couple more that I'm reading, uh, but they're longer ones that I have bookmarked. Uh, I think one of them is like, 246 uh, chapters long. Uh, I've started like doing them in the order of like how few chapters they have left. Uh, one of them has, well, the shortest has 32 chapters currently. The most has, like I said, 246 chapters. I'm trying to get the ones that are under 40 done now. Um, and after that, I think it jumps up to like 50 and 60 in terms of how many chapters they each have, just so I can, like, get through as many as I can without, you know, being bogged down. Especially since I keep getting to the end of them, and they're ongoing stories, and it makes me sad because there's no more story, and I have to wait. Always depressing. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Like I said, the next one of these, if I do one, might be a, a while down the road. So, uh, until then, I'll catch y'all next time. Bye for now.